This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Danita News, a gaggle of geese divides a harbourside community with some alternative suggestions added to the mix. A funding squeeze leaves the services of a local training network up in the air despite steady demand. And music lovers are in for a real treat as an annual singing contest gets underway. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. The days are numbered for a gaggle of geese who have been reportedly terrorising Roseneath and Port Chalmers residents over the past two months. A group of locals have been given until Sunday to come up with a plan to save the birds from being shot. But opinion on the best way to move them on is dividing the harbourside community. A group of birds creating quite the mess. This gaggle of wild geese have been fouling the Watson Park sports ground in Port Chalmers since moving in around two months ago. Port Chalmers Community Board Chairman Steve Walker says it's a problem that isn't going away. Primarily from the fouling of the geese, there's a little bit of, um, of destruction to the grass itself, obviously with the geese eating the grass, and also residents in Roseneath reporting that uh, geese were breaking into the, the gardens and destroying uh, primarily the vegetable beds. The perceived menaces stayed mostly on the ground today until local woman Beerus Ford shooed them away. She says she's in favour of moving them on in a humane way. The obvious, the obvious solution for me would be for them to be rehoused or left alone but obviously being left alone is already off the table. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, there's too much, there's too much animosity. Yeah so, um, yeah, so that's obviously off the table, so the next best solution would be to rehouse them. The issue is causing division in the community with arguments about the best way to deal with the problem. Resident Jackie Ruston says she has a direct solution that she believes could benefit the community. I think the best solution being is how it's Matariki time of year here, that as a community we come together and make use of all the beautiful bounty that our nat nature has provided us in Port Chalmers. Uh, we have kaimwana, we have all sorts of wild fruit and vegetables in the area and we have geese and I think it would be a really delicious thing for us to have a big feast at Pioneer Hall and celebrate Matariki and cook them up for the people. But Dunedin City Council Parks and Reserves Manager Hamish Black says that's simply not going to happen. Obviously in a, in a normal hunting capacity people do do that. Um, in this situation um, the priority is to try work with the group to, to, to have a live capture and then relocate. If, if that's unsuccessful then, then culling has seriously got to be re-looked at. Um, but yeah, they wouldn't be made available f um, for eating or anything like that. Black says the problem has already cost the council around $3,000 as well as a considerable amount of time for both volunteers and paid contractors. With some weekend sports games having had to be shifted to other grounds, he's looking forward to the problem finally being resolved. Daryl Beza, 39, Dunedin News. Traffic lights at two city intersections are being upgraded at a cost of $40,000. The New Zealand Transport Agency will begin by replacing the units at the State Highway 1 intersection at Anderson's Bay on Monday night. Following that, contractors will move to the Anzac Avenue and St Andrew Street intersection near the railway level crossing on Tuesday night. Ian Duncan from the NZTA says the new units will replace old technology and hopefully provide better reliability for road users. While the traffic signals are out of action, manual traffic controls will be in place. A community technology training network for people over 50 is feeling the pressure following the withdrawal of government funding. CNNet recently lost $400,000 of funding from the Tertiary Education Council. But with the ever-changing array of personal gadgets, the CEO says there's no end for their services in sight. Giving tips to those less tech savvy. Senior Net Federation Executive Officer Grant Sidaway is in town to give a talk to residents about the changing face of technology. Today I'm going to be talking about the Internet of Things, everything connected to everything, the future Internet. I'll be talking about wearable technology. I'll be talking about safety with the Internet. I'll be talking about passwords. 
Senior Ned was started 25 years ago to help both adults and the elderly use computers effectively. The service currently operates in more than 80 locations around the country, teaching people not only about computers, but other technology like smartphones and photography. But a loss of $40,000 worth of government funding earlier this year has put a strain on services. A large portion of our funding has been through uh, the government, through the tertiary education system. We had a contract with them to perform adult education for technology for older people. Unfortunately, last year they changed their priorities. The group also operates on commercial funding, but staff are continuing to lobby for government funding. Sitaway says those taking part in classes may have to start paying more if that funding gap can't be filled. But he's positive things will work out, with class numbers growing due to an increasing need for help with new technology. Technology keeps moving and SeniorNet, the success of SeniorNet will always be, they must move with it as well. The volunteer tutors, of which I take my hat off to them, 700 volunteer tutors around the country, always looking to do new things. And that will be the success of SeniorNet. The classes which are designed for those over 50 years of age range from basic skills like using email through to lessons on cyber security and social networking. Essential skills for anyone, regardless of age. Annabelle Dick. 39, Dunedin News. Police say a small cluster of offending west of the city may be part of a growing trend in the area. A daytime burglary in Outram was followed by an unusual crime nearby at a Goodall Street address yesterday. The occupant reported finding a small wooden man on fire in the garden of their Mosgiel property. Nothing was taken in either incident and a suspect has been put forward by the Goodall Street resident. Police are keeping an open mind on whether the incidents are related, but say any information from the public is welcome. Dunedin's Town Hall is echoing with the sweet sound of music for the region's annual Big Sing contest. Hundreds of talented high school students are pitting their lungs against one another, singing for a spot in the national finals, but it's just a small taste of what's still to come. Raising the bar vocally, high school students from Otago and beyond are making their voices heard for the local round of the annual Big Sing competition. We have some very good choirs, choirs that have been to national uh, finales before, um, Otago Girls, Otago Boys, St Hilda's, uh, Craighead have all been to finale. Um, there's a lot of new choir directors this year so it'll be interesting to see how the choirs match up. 21 choirs from throughout Otago and South Canterbury are gathered for the regional competition at the Dunedin Town Hall. Each choir has 10 minutes to perform three pieces, including one classical, one New Zealand written, and a final piece they're allowed to add flair to. Overall, Tarbotten says the talent on show is of a high quality, a good sign of what's to come in the national final. Once all the regionals have been finished, then the adjudicators gather in Wellington and they have a score sheet and so they look at the ones that are above a certain number, you know, maybe 90 out of 100, and they will listen to those ones and from there they choose 24 choirs. Those involved are all hoping to make the cut for the national competition later this year where the top 24 schools will face off. This year the final has been held in Dunedin and organisers are eager to see at least a couple of local schools make the cut. Tarbotten says the event will provide a boost not only to the city's economy, but its cultural scene. There will be 600 school students and parents and conductors all here. They'll be uh, doing recitals around the city and the museum and the churches. Uh, there will be day sessions every day and evening sessions and it will culminate in a finale concert. The finalists for the national competition will be announced next month ahead of the final event in late August. Annabelle Dick, 39. Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we take a look at the work ahead for one researcher who's benefiting from a sizeable research grant. And we find out just how much the flag referendum cost us. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell, menswear, it fits. Junk Free June is about making a change that makes you healthier and happier. Kick the junk or that bad habit during June and you'll be helping yourself and supporting the Cancer Society. Get others to support you and get rewarded with discounts on some great products and services too. Go to junkfreejune.org.nz today and get started. You'll be doing good for you and for local people affected by cancer. 
one, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. Junkfree Tune. I'm giving up chocolate. Go to junkfreetune.org.nz today and get started. Wake up time and another frantic day ahead for Haraway's Oat Singles. With three delicious flavours in each pack, they don't last long with this family. They're so convenient and tasty and they're ready in seconds. Haraway's Oat Singles are the ideal breakfast or snack on the run for today's busy families. And there's a flavour to suit everyone. Beat the rush and make sure you get your favourite flavour. Haraway's sure. Oat Singles. Try new Kiwi Favourites Caramel Variety Pack. I understand now how economics can affect global warming. And I found out how grass growth in New Zealand affects Fashion Week in Milan. I can even tell you how smartphone technology affects the survival of mountain gorillas. Sorry. Because at the Otago Business School, it's not just about the world of business, it's how business affects the world. I'm Kim. <laughs> Michaela. David. And this is our place in the world. Take your place in the world. Drive-In Miss Daisy is a safe, friendly and reliable companion driving Hello, service. Hello Jean, where are we off to today? We form genuine friendships with our clients and help them to remain independent. Thousands of Driving Miss Daisy clients and their families love our caring, affordable service. Call us today for a quote on 0800 948 432 or visit drivingmissdaisy.co.nz. Driving Miss Daisy for the gift of independence. Thinking of services for older people, think Enliven. Enliven is a service philosophy where people come first. Enliven is about choice, activity, relationships, respect and security. You can enliven your health, your friendships, your life, no matter what your age. For more information, go to psitago.org.nz or call 4777-115. It's Junk Free June. I'm giving up the couch. Go to junkfreetune.org.nz today and get started. Welcome back. Otago's prospective homeowners are experiencing the side effects of a drop in the number of properties for sale. The median price rose by more than $13,000 compared to May last year, with prices rising 8% in Dunedin. Sales across the region for May rose 32%, up almost 40% in Dunedin alone. Regional commentator Liz Nid says the region only has 11 weeks of inventory on hand. She says it's unlikely the supply situation will ease until spring at the earliest. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 has closed the day up uh, 35 points. It's now at 6,870. And to the exchange rate, the Kiwi dollar is up against all the currencies we follow. More than $100 million in grants have been allocated in the latest round of funding by the Health Research Council of New Zealand. Otago researchers gained 22 contracts, including five major multi-million dollar five-year programs. Professor Cliff Abram is one of those researchers and he joins us now to talk about what his portion of the funding will help with. Good evening. Good evening. Tell us about what your latest research is looking at. Well, my research is built on three pillars of, of interest. One is what are the neural mechanisms of memory? How do nerve cells actually do, the, do that of storing memory? Then uh, part of that we want to understand what are the proteins and molecules that are involved in that? And then finally, do these molecules or these proteins have therapeutic potential in, in the disorders where there's a memory loss, as in Alzheimer's disease? And is this a continuation of work that you had already started? 
Well, I've been interested in memory mechanisms all my career. Um, and then in the last 10 or 12 years, we've been aiming it more towards seeing if there's therapeutic potential and what we've been finding out and with a particular interest in Alzheimer's disease. So this does carry on our interests in, the, in, uh, in this kind of um, issue. And you've uh, received a $5 million grant. How much is that going to help you? It's absolutely vital. We're really grateful to the Health Research Council. Uh, basically, our work wouldn't be able to continue without this funding. So it's really providing the platform for testing out these new ideas we have. How long do you, how many years do you think it's going to last? Well, this grant's for five years. Yeah. And so we'll be, um, we have quite a few objectives that, that you know, across many labs that uh, actually that, that will be, that this money will be used for. How many people are involved in the project? So this is a, a a team effort. It's really based um, around the efforts of five main research labs. I have five main collaborators in biochemistry, anatomy, and pharmacy, and psychology. And um, across those labs, between the postgrad students and the researchers and staff, we have about 30 people that will be lining up to work on these mm. uh, projects. Mm. What will you be studying in particular? What's first of cab off the rank? I guess we have three main objectives. One is uh, well, as you know, Alzheimer's disease is a very difficult, complex disorder, and we still don't know enough about it. So we need to know more about mm -hmm. the molecules that, are, that may be involved and the changes in the brain that are occurring. So we want to see, looking at post-mortem tissue and also in bloods from people with Alzheimer's disease, if that gives us a hint, a window into what's happening in the brain. The other problem is um, we don't have good enough models of the disease to test new therapies on, so we have some uh, novel ideas about uh, generating models of the disease that we can then test our therapeutic ideas on. And we have some new ideas about therapies as well. So we'll be able to test them in our new uh, models of the disease. How complex is that research? Well, w the disease itself is extremely complex mm. and that's why we're still not very far along in treating the disease. Mm. So you have to be very um, focused uh, on your research that you're undertaking. It's a very complex process in terms of the kind of research you undertake because it's a very complex disease. So it takes a lot of work with people from different skills that, are, that we find in these different departments and my colleagues work together as a great team to bring together what's necessary to address the disorder. Mm. Are the researchers elsewhere in the world doing the same sort of research? The issue of Alzheimer's disease is worldwide. Mm. Researchers all over the planet are working on the, on the problem. The fact that we still are just inching along it indicates the complexity. Mm -hmm. But we think we have some specific new ideas that, that will make um, uh, real progress, we hope, in, in um, understanding and treating the disease. So uh, we think we have a little advantage in the particular um, ideas that we're bringing to the table. We hope so too. Why is Alzheimer's of particular interest to you? Well. Uh, for a start, I've had a long-standing interest in memory um, and the understanding that there are diseases that are particularly associated with memory loss um, has really um, come to my attention, I suppose, over the years and so it's been an easy transition to go from the basic mechanisms to this kind of more applied research. But also, it's a huge problem for mm -hmm. societies in general. New Zealand, uh, there's a wave of coming uh, kind of increase in the in the incidence of the disease and prevalence so um, it's a major issue it needs as much effort as we can put into it because it's one of the most it is the most expensive disease um, in New Zealand. Professor Cliff Abram good luck with the research and thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you very much. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, the flag referendum comes in under budget and we find out whether or not you change your driving ha habits in winter. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. It's Junk Free June. I'm giving up the couch. Go to junkfreejune.org.nz today and get started. Come one, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. We're a 
25 Moreau Place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. ambiguities of law because whilst the law may be clear there is still room for both yes and no what? no the decision will depend on logical thinking and the art of argument and this is what we learn at New Zealand's first and world-renowned law faculty you can stop now I'm Latifale and this is my place in the world take your place in the world it's junk free June I'm giving up chocolate Go to junkfreetune.org.nz today and get started. Thinking of services for older people, think Enliven. Enliven is a service philosophy where people come first. Enliven is about choice, activity, relationships, respect and security. You can enliven your health, your friendships, your life, no matter what your age. For more information, go to psitago.org.nz dot nz or call four triple seven one one five. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. The total cost of the country's flag referendum has been released, with figures showing the project came in under budget. The provisional cost has been revealed as $21.8 million, almost $4 million less than what was initially budgeted. That's despite the late addition of the Red Peak option, which cost just under $270,000. The most expensive aspect of the process was the first postal referendum, coming in at a cost of $9 million. And after two referendums, 57% of New Zealanders voted to retain the current flag, with the remainder voting for the Kyle Lockwood alternative. Residents are being encouraged to show off their southern hospitality ahead of a rare All Blacks test in the city. The Dunedin City Council wants both the Kiwi side and the visiting Wales team to feel welcome upon arrival. The All Blacks squad arrives on Sunday afternoon, while the Welsh arrive next Thursday. Fans are being urged to dress up and head out to the airport where the Kings and Queens High School's Kapa Haka group will perform. Mayor Dave Cull says he's sure there will be tremendous and wonderfully culturally appropriate support for both teams when they arrive. Police were left reeling after the Queen's birthday road toll reached its highest number in 27 years. Eleven people died on the roads nationwide, prompting police to reiterate the importance of driving to the conditions. With that in mind, our Word on the Street team went out to ask members of the public whether they change their driving behaviour during winter. Depending on the weather, if it's frosty, definitely slow down. If it's not, still keep an eye out on what the roads are like. But apart from that, it all depends on what the weather's like, really. It can still be warm days in winter. Not often. Absolutely. So you've got to drive to the conditions. Yep. Yeah, because some people just drive too fast. And with ice on the roads, and it's really dangerous. You need to just slow down. Absolutely. I live out of town, so I see uh, some awful crashes, people sliding off the roads, etc. I think that the main roads are pretty well looked after as far as the gritting and everything goes, but I think the steep suburban streets in town really can be so treacherous and everyone just has to be so careful. Oh, well, you have to adapt to the conditions, you know, if it's wet, if it's icy or windy or, yeah, you have to modify it. Oh, of course. I mean, maybe take some time, or some extra time, just before you start out, you know, 
if you've got somewhere to be, just take 15 minutes extra, just take it easy. Uh, well, they should change for the winter conditions. Yeah. They should still be driving safely no matter whether it's summer or winter. Absolutely. For the reasons being safe on the roads and thinking about others, maybe. Yeah, but the point is, there's a lot of, shall we say, I might be, young people don't care. Look at that one last week, killed himself, 17 Bauk Wow. What can you do? Mum said, no, you haven't got it, or you haven't, uh, no, get a smaller car and things like that. No, they won't take any notice. Because of the conditions of the road, slippery, and, yep, you slow down, ice, you don't know what's around the corner. Yeah, definitely. If it's dangerous, then if it's bad weather, you have to slow down and yeah, drive to the conditions. Like. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. Debate is raging over what to do with a gaggle of geese causing problems in Port Chalmers with arguments for both saving or eating them. Despite the loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of government funding, senior net staff are feeling confident about their future. And the Dunedin Town Hall was filled with song today as high school pupils took part in the regional competition of the Big Sing. Well, it's time now to find out what's going to be in Thursday's Otago Daily Times and we're joined by Dave Cannon. Good evening. How are you? Those poor old geese, eh? Yeah. What a tough life. It is. But they've got a few more days to see if they can survive. So, mm. uh, yes. Uh, tomorrow, ODT, we're looking at um, disappearing mailboxes around town. New Zealand Post has uh, signalled that uh, some more are to be removed because of uh, lack of uh, use, apparently. But uh, I guess uh, the more you take them away, the less they will be used. Mm. And uh, so we're trying to save money on the cost of taking letters. Uh, we have a c coverage of a big uh, business and tourism conference in Auckland which shows a big leap in the number of people coming to Dunedin, which is good news for Dunedin. We've got coverage of that big thing that you fellows have got as well. We've got some good photo coverage of that today. And also we're having a look at the candlelight vigil tonight in the Octagon for the Orlando Massacre. Mm. And the wash is looking at things like contrails and arithmetic, solving old, 100-year-old arithmetic problems. Oh, so cool. something a bit different. Excellent. That's tomorrow's wash and the ODT. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Time now for local weather. This 39 Dunedin News weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. And here is our city view. It's taken of kids playing in Tomahawk. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 12 degrees for the central city, 11 at the gardens, 14 for the Tyree. To the situation and an intense anti-cyclone covers the Tasman with a west to south west flow over the country. Around some of the main towns in the lower south for tomorrow, strong westerlies with some cloud for all of these towns, highs between 9 and 13 degrees. And a fine day with westerlies for Queenstown, Omaru, Wanaka and Twizel, highs of 12 or 13 degrees. Remaining fine in Dunedin tonight with a low of zero. Tomorrow some cloud at times with westerly winds and a high of 13. And on Friday high cloud increasing with nor'westers developing at a high of 15. To the Otago Pallet Fires title and fishing information, low tide tomorrow morning is at 20 past 7. And fishing conditions are still not ideal so we recommend giving them a miss. And that is the local news for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.